able to ship in Sage 100. I'm Darcy Borea with ScanForce. And in 30 minutes today, we're going to show you how to eliminate some extra steps and increase your order velocity with tools from ScanForce and B Technologies that integrate with your Sage 100 system. And as I mentioned, we're recording the session. If you have any questions, please do type them in the questions window. Um, we may try to address them as we go, but definitely try to get to them at the end. And our presenters today are Steve Showalter, Director of Sales at ScanForce, and Caroline Rua, VP of Sales and Marketing with Starship. So Steve, off you go. Thanks so much, Darcy. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is kinda of hit on a quick agenda for you guys so you know what you're gonna be looking at here. So we're gonna start off by hitting on the ScanForce mobile sales module. We're gonna show you that from the uh, mobile device application and also then how that information goes into your Sage system. From there, we're gonna move into the ScanForce WMS. Just a quick overview of what that module does. Uh, we're also gonna to touch on the DSD ScanForce multi then just do a quick review of what that does and how that impacts your Sage system. And then we're gonna finish that up with the directed picking and staging packing as well. So from there, we're gonna pass it on over to Caroline at Starship where she's gonna hit on multi-carrier multi-mode that they have, the streamlined international shipments, the way they can do that, and then custom emails and labels. Okay, so I would like now at this point to switch on over to an emulation of a tablet here. So as I mentioned, the first thing that we're gonna to touch on here is the ScanForce mobile sales. Now this is actually a pretty versatile module that we have. It can be run on smartphones, tablets, PCs, uh, can be used out at trade shows, field sales reps, uh, counter sales, and even we have some customers that have installed it at their own customers where we limit the uh, information that they can see that allows them to quickly and easily place sales orders within the Sage system. So to go over this very quickly here, this is the main screen you would see whenever you would launch ScanForce mobile sales. We control user logins in terms of allowing people to do things within our program. So it's really our permissions control here. It does not take up additional Sage licenses or anything like that. And our licensing is per device. So you can set up as many user logins as you want um, without having to purchase additional users from us. You can password protect it so that you can have people logging in on the same device and control what permissions they're able to get access to. And it also works in a multi-company environment. So when I log in, this is the main screen that someone would see. So you have options under the transaction section there to create new transactions or review transactions that somebody's created on a device but hasn't yet sent back to your Sage system. All ScanForce modules and mobile sales is obviously included in that function whether you're connected or disconnected. So it's great for field reps that are out in the field that may not be in an area where they have cellular data connection or Wi-Fi. They can still create transactions. And again, if they haven't sent them yet, they can even review those. Off to the right, we have inquiries. So you can look up customer information and you can also see item information, such as quantities that are available in certain warehouses, item pricing, things of that nature. Down below here, just really quickly, is where we have the settings where you can control order numbers and things of that nature. A refresh data, which actually syncs the device with your Sage system. And that's important to do at least once a day because if you do happen to get disconnected, that's how you have current information in terms of whether there's been pricing changes, uh, quantity changes, and things of that nature as well. Finally, you have send data, which we'll tap on after we've created transactions, and that just pushes the data back over to your Sage system. So let's get into this and create a transaction. So what I'm going to do is simply tap on new transaction here. And at this point, I need to indicate a customer. So we have the ability to allow you to search for customers and you can see they display on your left hand side and you can scroll with a finger. You also could at the top in that search bar start typing a customer name or the customer number. We even have an option to allow you to create customers on the fly if that's a part of your business. As far as this relates to a user login, we can tie that to the stage sales rep so that a person might only need to see their customers. So you can limit it in that manner as well. I'm just gonna select the first customer here. And you can see once you select a customer on the right hand side, you have some basic customer information over here. Now to create a transaction, I just tap create transaction. And the options within our module are to create quotes, you can do sales orders, direct invoices, or even create credit memos. This can also be locked down based on that user login. So if your environment, you're only doing invoicing, for example, you may not wanna allow anybody to do anything else or sales orders or so on. So today we're just gonna create a sales order. 
and it's going to default to our header tab where you have some basic customer information here. This is where you could change the warehouse you want to sell out of. You could change the ship date, the ship uh, via. Uh, if you have multiple terms, you can change some data here, and this is all pulling based on the data that's in your Sage system. If I tap on the address tab here is where you're going to see the bill to address and ship to. If your customer is set up in Sage with multiple ship tos, you can tap that drop down, even change the ship to here if you want to. Now the lines tab is where you're really going to build this order. So your options here, you can go ahead and tap on them and use my mouse to point to this. This little barcode here will enable the camera on the device. So you can utilize the camera to actually scan a barcode if you want. If you have a rugged device with a built-in scanner, you can scan at any time the focus is on any field. You can key in the information here, or once again, search for an item on the left-hand side there. I'm simply just gonna tap on the first item and show you the way this behaves here. As soon as I select an item, it's gonna default over to the quantity field and pop up a numeric keypad so I can indicate how many they want. It's displaying for me the price, and the pricing is based on the pricing levels you have set in Sage. So our solution, respects the pricing hierarchy that you have set within your Sage system, and you can lock this down so the user may not be able to change prices, or you can allow them to change that as well. Now, I'm just gonna tap in a quantity of 10 here and add that item to the order. So that's all you do to add items. Now, you also have a different view to choose items. Up at the top, you see that catalog button. When I tap on that, that's gonna now pull up a different view, and it's utilizing the images that are saved in your Sage system. So if you save the items there and item maintenance, you'll have that available for you on the scanner here or mobile device. Now you can simply just scroll through. If you find an item that you wanna order or your customer's interested in, you can go ahead and just tap the add button and that adds a single quantity there. Or you could tap on the image and it pulls it up in a little more detailed view here where again, you have some information such as pricing, the quantity on hand and available, unit of measure and so on. So I can tap right from here on the quantity screen. Let's say they want to add five. I can go ahead and simply add that item then. And that adds that to that order as well. Now to exit this catalog view, simply tap the catalog button again, and I'm back out of it. You'll see at the bottom, it's also giving me a running total of what's going on for this particular order. Another feature that our customers commonly used is a last purchase history. So if I tap on the dots in the upper right corner there, you'll see some additional options here. Last purchase history, price level lookup, alternate items, and you can even add a slash C comment line to an order. The last purchase history that I mentioned is commonly used so that you can potentially upsell a customer. You can pull this up. It displays this for you here. I can search through. If I find an item, I can say, you know, back on the 27th of July, you bought this particular item. Would you like to order this again? They say yes. Right from this lookup, I can highlight that, hit accept, and pull that onto my device. Now, over on the totals tab here, this gives me an overview of what I've done for this order. It also gives me a chance if I wanted to, to review this with the customer. And if they wanted to make changes, I could simply highlight an item. And on the right, you see a pencil here. That allows me to edit that one particular line, or I could delete a line. Within our programs, we also have the ability to capture a signature. So I can tap sign and have them sign off on this. Now, this signature, follows this order all the way through back to uh, sales order entry in Sage and all the way through to invoice entry. What we do is provide you with a UDF and we just put that in as an image attached to that order through the life of that order. Now, at this point, I'm gonna tap save and what it does is it's gonna save the order on the device itself right now. So you can, indicate, or you can see here the order number starts with a G8. Now, that's my device ID number. So we have two options here. One is we can give it a unique order number each time. That way, you could print off a receipt or email one to your customer right there on site, and whatever order number you're using here is going to be the order number even back in Sage and the one that they have. We do that so that you don't have two devices duplicating order numbers or someone back in Sage creating orders that's going to duplicate that order number for you. If that's not a concern as far as giving your customer a copy and you want to use the next order number in Sage, we can set it up to do that as well. So at this point, I've tapped save and the, the order is saved on my device. I get a screen now where I could print off a receipt for my customer and I could hide the pricing if I wanted to or print multiple copies there. You can print off a small little receipt or a full eight and a half by 11. Now I'm gonna tap print receipt and I have mine printed to a web browser so that I can show you guys what this looks like. You can see the signatures on there and you can see the information based on the order we created. 
That's also what it would look like if you emailed that off to someone. And the email receipt, when you tap on that, that's gonna go ahead and pull up the email addresses that you have saved for that customer, but it also launches the local email that you're using on the device here, so you can key in a new email address if you wanted to. There's also, we put signature capture here, because we found when people go to have a receipt printed, they may have forgotten to capture the signature, and they can do that here. Now, I'm gonna tap back to main, and this is where I can continue on my day if I'm not in an area where I can send the data. Now, if I have a device that has cellular data connection and I'm in coverage, I can send that information at any point. Or, if I maybe periodically throughout the day stop by a location like a Starbucks or a McDonald's that has free Wi-Fi, I can go ahead and transmit my data that way. We have a setting option that every time you tap that back to main, it can try to connect up and send that information so you never have a lot of orders uh, getting stockpiled on these devices. Some of our customers will implement policies where orders placed by a certain uh, time during the day will ship that same day, so they don't want any of their sales reps to accidentally forget to send it over. So again, when I tap that back to main, it would automatically try to send the data over for me. Otherwise, all I have to do now is hit send data. I get a quick overview of what I have ready to send over. Tap send data on the top there. It's gonna connect up to my Sage system and it's gonna instantly import back to Sage. Now, I'm going to pull up my Sage system here and I'm gonna go into sales order entry and that order that we just did is gonna be right here. I do order lookup, and I scroll to the bottom, you'll see that G822, if I go to lines, you'll see here are the items, and here are the quantities. Now, I have this linked into my Sage install that has the uh, DSD ScanForce multi-bin installed. So the importance of that is going to come into play now when I do the pick, pack, and ship side of this. And what I want to mention now is a feature within multi-bin, and really quickly, for those of you that aren't familiar with multi-bin, it really just allows you to have multiple locations tied to an item in inventory. And I'll show you a little bit more detail on that one when we get into the order after it's picked. But for right now, within sales order entry, you can actually allocate bin locations. And the reason for doing that and what that really means is you're saving that item from a particular location for a particular order. And we have methods to have that automatically occur, either at sales order entry or at picking sheet printing. You can also do that manually if you want. I have mine set to automatically uh, allocate. And what'll happen then is when I show you the bin distribution here, you'll see it automatically allocated from bin location A50U. And those uh, parameters as far as why and how it does the auto allocation are controlled within the multi-bin settings as well. So you have multiple options on how that can happen. Okay, so. We have this order in our system, and now I'm going to switch off of the device that I was using for mobile sales, and now over to a device set up for the warehouse piece. Steve, uh, before you move on, we have a couple questions pertaining to mobile sales that I think we could address real quickly. Um, one is, is this available for Apple devices? Yes, it runs on any device. And then the second question is, if we have Sage Payments integrated, is that also part of the process? We do not have an integration with Sage Payments, but we do have an integration for credit card processing through American Payment Services. And we even have an integration, not on the question topic here, but I did want to mention it, with uh, the Avalara Avatax solution. That's also integrated into the solution as well. Okay, thank you. All right. No, good timing, Darcy. Thank you. So. Now I've pulled up a device for the warehouse side of things. And this solution also runs on iOS devices or Android devices. I'm showing a rugged device that's designed for warehouse use. Um, login, same concept as what we did on the uh, mobile sales side of things. Menu's gonna look a little different here though. To pick this order, I'm gonna go ahead and go into order processing. Now within our WMS modules, we have the ability to do receipt of goods. We have things like wave receiving, RMA receiving, um, there's quite a bit of options. We have inventory counts and transfers, put away programs, things of that nature. And I did wanna mention earlier, and I'll mention it now, if anybody sees anything today uh, that sparks them and as far as being interested in seeing a more in-depth demo, both Caroline and I do that all the time. We'll go ahead and kind of connect up one-on-one -on -one and really go through the solution in detail. Now, getting back to the order that we just created in mobile sales, I need to now pick or stage that order. So I'm gonna tap on order processing. And within this menu is where I have my receiving options, but you also see I have several options related to picking and shipping. So with ScanForce, you can stage orders utilizing the picking program, and then you can check and pack them. 
You also can do a quick ship with sales order shipping. That simply just takes it as an order and ends up as an invoice back in stage or in shipping data entry without having to stage that order. Now as to pick this order, I'm gonna launch that program. At this point, you could scan a barcode. If you have a barcode of picking sheet, you could key in the order number or you could utilize a lookup. No matter what method you do this, we're connecting up real time to Sage and we're showing you now all the orders that are available for picking. I can search by the customer name or the order number. Once again, I can also scroll, and we're just gonna go down to the bottom here, and here's the order that G822 is what we just placed on the scanner or on the mobile device. I'm gonna select that and hit accept. Once again, connecting up real time, grabbing that data, and we lock that order then back in Sage so that no one else can get into it and make any changes. Now, when we're picking, you can pick to, for example, a shipping bin or a staging bin. You could even have bins set up per customer to stage to. I'm gonna go ahead and scan a barcode for shipping. And what it's gonna do now is it's gonna utilize those bin allocations that occurred back in Sage with the DSD ScanForce multi-bin. And it's now going to display, to display for me what to pick and what order to pick it in. It would actually do the bin sort by bin location. You guys remember, this item was the first item on that particular sales order. It's the last one to pick because of the bin location. And that's important so that you're not walking all over your warehouse back and forth. Okay, so let's just go through. For timing sake here, I'm just gonna grab this item. It tells me the bin location. I indicate my quantity. I continue on. As I pick items, they drop off of this lookup. And you could pick just part of it and then send it back to Sage and the next person to go ahead and grab that order is only going to see what's left. So now when I send it back to Sage, it's gonna import in and it's gonna do two key things for us. One, it's gonna reallocate that bin to shipping. And the second thing is it transfers that item out of the bin I picked it from and into shipping. So now the next step of this would be to check and pack it. And this could be a different uh, user, a different um, area as well. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this order. You could scan it or again, do the lookup. And now all of my items are staged from that shipping bin. So it knows for this order where it was actually shipped from or where it was, I'm sorry, staged to. So I select my bin and it's still displaying for me where to go in the sense of what to get, but not really because it's been staged to shipping. I don't have to go anywhere. The important thing is I can indicate what I'm packing and what package it goes into. So we'll go ahead and start with package one there. We're gonna grab our first item. And let's say only five of the 10 fit into package one. I go back here, tap the plus button, go into package two, pack the remaining five. Say I still have room in package five, so I'm gonna go on to my next item here that's gonna be packed. And we'll put five in there. And now we'll go into package three and pack our last item. So we're able to actually indicate that right on a mobile device, or you could have this set up at a PC at a shipping station. Bottom line is when I'm done and I send that back, now we're gonna go ahead and create the shipping data, <coughs> excuse me, shipping data entry transaction. Steve, there's a question on that process. What happens if the item is not found in the allocated bin? Does it allow override? That is a setting option we can enable. We do not recommend doing that because if you go ahead and deviate from allocated bins, the allocation only occurs when quantity is available anyways. So if you deviate from what's allocated, you're gonna really screw up your bin locations. But it is a setting we can disable. <coughs> now I'm just pulling up here the transaction shipping data entry. Here are the items, I go over to package. Here's the package information. And this is where Starship will pick up from here to actually complete the shipping process. So I'm gonna pass this over to Carolyn. Awesome, thanks Steve, that was good. Um, let me just get my screen showing here. So we can get it going on the Starship side. So when um, after you've done the pick and pack using the ScanForce uh, mobile devices, you're then ready to process the shipment. Um, so you're going to run Starship out in the warehouse um, and go ahead and put the um, invoice number in. I have an enhancement in Starship to um, allow you to scan the order number. Um, and so we're going to bring that order number in, similar to the one that um, Steve just processed going to pull in the associated invoice that was generated and um, that you just saw in shipping data entry on Steve's machine. So here in Starship now on this um, area here, you'll see the header level information. We've translated the ship via. 
um, billing type can also get translated here and also the ship to. In this case, I sent it, I sent it to um, American Business Futures out in, Cal in Canada so that we could show you some international functionality that's available through Starship. If you look here down in the packaging view, I'm just going to expand these. And really, this is um, the information that was defined using the handheld when um, Steve put his items in the various boxes. So my first box um, has five of these. Um, second box had these two items, and the third one had the rest of the printer stands in it. Now, when I'm drilling into these items, you'll notice here there's some international data. And this will be shown if this is an international shipment. So what's happening here in Starship is um, Schedule B, um, Certificate of Origin, very um, shipping-specific information that's related to the item. We store that in Starship, or we can store that in Starship. Um, typically, this is not information that's stored in the inventory file in Sage. If it is, we can map to that data and pull it in that way. Or in this case, um, I just folded this information in as I pulled in the invoice. I can also do a rate shop from Starship. So Starship supports both parcel and LTL carriers direct, where we will connect up to the carrier servers directly using your credentials to get your most accurate negotiated rate or contract rate with those carriers. So in this example here, um, I'm coming back with several different carriers. I, as I mentioned, a combination of both um, parcel and freight. And um, it looks like it's um, defaulted to UPS Worldwide Express here based on my ship via, but maybe I want to go ahead and use UPS Standard Taganda because it's going to get there a little later, but it's a lot less expensive. So I can go ahead and select that on the fly. This is um, also can be um, set for user permissions in Starship. So if you don't want your shippers to be able to modify any part of the ship screen or specific parts of the ship screen while you're processing shipments, um, you can set that through roles and permissions on the Starship side. So I'm going to go ahead and process this shipment. Um, Starship's going to communicate out to the carrier. It's going to generate the uh, barcoded shipping labels, any international docs, and it's also going to update the SAGE data in real time. So this is an example of what we call our smart label. It's a combination packing list plus shipping label sent to an 8.5 by 11, and this is just a little die cut area for the um, label that's actually going to go on the package. This packing list can also be sent to um, a thermal label printer along with the shipping label, of course. So you can have a couple of thermal labels print for every box and just put the packing list on the inside and stick the, the carrier label on the outside. So that was my first box. It had five of these um, filing cabinets in it. And then my second package, which Steve had five of the, the rest of the um, filing cabinets in those lamps. And then the last package had the printer stands in it. So once um, the labels have gone out for the carrier, now we're looking at the international document that Starship is generating as a result. So really, header level information up here at the top, the item level information we're putting down um, in the body of this document, all fields that are um, being either pulled directly from SAGE or um, brought in from the Starship database, which really um, eliminates the need for the shipper to have to manually enter that information out in shipping. So once we process the shipment, we're ready to process our next one. Um, what I wanted to do is just to go back into SAGE and take a look at that invoice. I think that was 22. Oh, let's get the right invoice here. <laughs> so here's that invoice with the tracking information. So we wrote back the tracking numbers for each of those packages, freight charges. Also on the totals tab, the freight amount, so we can update the freight amount. This can actually include um, freight rules where Starship calculates this freight charge, and it can be based on your list rate, um, negotiated or contract rate, it can have parameters on top of that. So if you want to give your gold customers a certain discount off the list rate, you can create those calculations or define those calculations, and Starship will automatically update that for you. So in addition to updating the SAGE document, 
Starship is also going to generate an email notification. This is our branded email. So um, it's going to take the place of the carrier supplied email, give you a lot of um, functionality wrapped around that. So here you'll notice that um, in the subject, you can put in some um, references to maybe the PO number, which would be um, something that your customer would be able to reference on their side and know right away what this order is pertaining to. Um, you can put your logo, maybe even an image from your website in the body. Um, and then in the body of the email, you'll also have the ability then to put all the information um, that's coming from or pulling from Sage directly here so that your customer can really see the granularity of this, um, the details of the shipment. So again, all of this information was defined using the handheld um, and the ScanForce solution that Steve showed you earlier. And you can send them back to your website if you want to try to encourage some repeat business. You also get access to a dashboard, which just gives the rest of your office um, access to shipment history, reports, and metrics. Um, this doesn't take up a user seat um, uh, from a shipping perspective, so any number of um, users at your site can use this to access the shipping information. Okay, that's all I had on my side. I'm going to go ahead and send it back to Steve, um, and then we can answer some questions. We have lots of questions. Did you have anything else to, to add, Steve, before we go through the questions? Uh, the one thing that I, just in the sake of time, didn't mention uh, is our dashboard that we have. I'll just pull it up really quickly here if you guys bear with me with my screen here. We have a tool that allows you to kind of just see the status of an order, you know, what's ready to pick, being picked, packed, shipped, even performance layouts, showing who's doing what out in the warehouse, and an entire section that allows us to capture everything to what the transaction was that you can actually drill into and filter through. You know, if you want to see information on your most popular item, for example, and then you can go to this export button and then how whatever information you've narrowed this down to, you can export in whatever form uh, format you want. So that was something I kind of didn't get a chance to mention that I wanted to, so thanks. Okay, well, thanks so much, guys. That was really slick. So we do have about seven questions. Um, so we appreciate everyone's time. If you do need to drop off, thank you very much. And there's the contact information, but let's just go through them in the order they came in. So on mobile sales, can the customer lookup be restricted to just those customers assigned to that sales rep? Yes, absolutely. Um, and furthermore, if you want it restricted further, we can put in custom parameters, however you want that. But yeah, that's that's an easy setting that we have as a default. All right, and this one's for Carolyn. Um, do you have a contract with a carrier for the rate shopping? Um, yeah, you do have to have a contract with the carrier because we're actually using um, the credentials in order to provide you with the negotiated rate. Um, so if you don't have a contract with a carrier and you simply want to um, get generate BOLs, um, for LTL shipments, you can use our user definable carrier for that option. Um, and then you can define as many carriers as you'd like. There's just no electronic reading that's happening there. Great. How do the box sizes carry over from the scanners to Starship? I noticed they are all custom packages with no dimensions. Good question. Yeah. Um, currently, go ahead. Do you want to start with that, Steve? I was going to actually pass it over to you so Caroline, you can take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so what we're what we're showing you right now is kind of out of the box um, functionality, uh, where um, we're sharing information between our two application using Sage as you know the um, the primary source. So um, in Sage, we're basically just pulling the information from those packaging tables, like Steve showed you from shipping data entry. And those packaging tables really don't have an area where you can define the actual box. Um, there are ways that you could possibly create a UDEF field there and then map that to Starship, but that's not available out of the box. Um, when you go into Starship, though, you do have the ability to have those packages defined. So if you are using, um, if you have like five different boxes that you um, often use, you can set those up in Starship and assign the appropriate DIMs to them and then simply select them on the ship screen when you're ready to ship. Okay, very good. Just a few more, and this one's a quick one. Are these products available for both Sage 100 and Sage 100C? Yes. Okay. Okay. 
And this one looks like for Starship, will this also handle the BOLs for LTL shipments? Yes, definitely. Okay, and can ScanForce work with RFID? Uh, yeah, it's a, that's a good question. Really, RFID, if anybody ever comes across that, is typically on the side of having to print RFID tags, which we can do from our labeling software. Reading an RFID tag is fine as well. We, it just takes understanding what format the data is in within the tag, and then we basically populate the data in Sage the same way we would if you're reading like a compound barcode or a 2D barcode. All right, guys, thanks everyone for hanging with us. I think we just have two more. We use the work order module. Does ScanForce offer any options that work with that module? Yes. yes. Uh, thank you to whoever asked that because I wanted to mention those things and just didn't have a chance. Uh, ScanForce, yeah, we have manufacturing options either through production entry, through the bill of material module, or through the work order module, automating uh, material issues and completions and labor tracking. So, yeah, we, we have manufacturing automation as well. All right. Last one, guys. I have customer pickups and my own trucks. Can Starship help there? Hi, thanks for the question. Yes, um, I mentioned that user definable carrier earlier. We have um, that option available for both small package and LTL, and that can be used for that purpose. Okay, oh, and the poll. We almost forgot the poll, guys. We're going to put a poll up here real quick, and please do let us know if you're interested in learning more about either or both of these solutions. And um, we really appreciate you all joining us today and we're looking forward to following up with you individually and answering any additional questions that we didn't have time to get to. So with that, uh, hey, Darcy, we... while, that poll, while that poll is up, it looks like Sean had a question um, for Starship on rate shopping with 3PL companies. Um, I you just sure wanted to know Sean on that, um, you know, Starship does not currently support um, 3PL integrations. Um, we do have one integration with FreightQuote, um, and that's similar to, or that's a 3PL, um, but that's the only 3PL that Starship currently supports. We've really gone in the direction of supporting the carriers directly, and we have about um, two dozen carrier connections. Okay, very good. We are still have votes coming in, so we'll leave the poll open, but I think that's going to conclude our presentation for today. So thanks again, everyone. And if you haven't voted in the poll, please do indicate your preference in the poll. And with that, we will uh, we'll just leave the webinar open, but y'all are free to go and have a great afternoon. Great. Thanks, thanks everybody. everybody.